Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's nice to be with you. And um, I'm going to fill my slot today. Uh, the last time I didn't fill it, it was, uh, there, was a, there was a purpose, but uh, today I'm going to fill it. And uh, before we started, and just to let you know for those who didn't hear that, but there, we are going to have two messages in one hour. Okay? So when I finish the first, we're going to have a song, just the first verse of the 14. Okay? Just to let you know. Uh, let us kneel where possible for prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for this blessing that we have to come before you. And as we are going to open up your word, we ask your Holy Spirit to be among us and working in us. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, the title of this presentation is The Fullness of the Godhead. And um, we are going to um, consider two verses. Uh, Matthew 28, 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In 2 Corinthians uh, 13 and 14, in fact, there is a mistake here. It's 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you. Amen. So with these two verses, we understood that it is God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us about God the Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there is no room. There is no room for uh, God, Colin, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, there is no room uh, for any things like that. <clears throat> and there is uh, in Greek a, um, uh, a word uh, which corresponds to English to the definite article uh, and we pronounce it ho and you can see it on the screen. It is a definite article. What is a definite article? <clears throat> can you help me, Mr. Grammar? It said something as a particular thing or person. Exactly, a particular thing or person. And you know, this uh, definite article is used regarding to God. And in fact, uh, when you look at uh, the interlinear of John 1 verse 1, you find that this definite article is just before the word God employed for the Father. Okay? And it is not translated, neither in the King James or in the French versions, okay? So it's really said in the beginning was, was the word, so the definite article is present in the translation, and the word was with God. But in fact, the, the, transla the translation should have said the word was with the God, and the word was with uh, was God. The same was in the beginning with the God. So the Father is the one God. His Son is God by nature. Amen? Okay. And in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, we are told that there is one God, the Father, and one Lord Jesus Christ. So the Father is the source of all, and Jesus is the channel of all, and His channel. Uh, should I say? <clears throat> and uh, in John 17, 1 and 3, um, we, uh, when Jesus is, is praying here, uh, he is speaking to his Father, and he said, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Uh, the word, <clears throat> the word true, true, uh, comes from uh, Aletinos, uh, which means the original. It is this word that is employed in Hebrew 8 regarding the, the, the tabernacle um, in heaven, and we are told that it is the true, so the original. So the Father is the origin, the original of whom Jesus is the image. And um, in Hebrew 1, verse 1 and 2, again, I just put for you uh, the word ha. And it starts really said to say the God, 
would at sundry time and in diverse manner speak in time past unto the Father by the prophets, having these last days spoken unto us by his Son. And later on in verse 3 he said, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So the one God is the original of which his father, his son is, is the image. And in Romans 1 verse 19 and 20, because that which may be known of the God is manifest in them, for the God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Amen. Here <clears throat> we see that when uh, the Bible uh, refer, uh, talk about the Godhead, it referred directly to the God. So what I want you to understand here for those that may not understand that because I did not understand that at the very beginning but as soon as I study I get it the God the Father in himself he is the Godhead he don't need anyone else to be the Godhead amen, amen. okay the Father is the fullness of the Godhead and in Acts 17 29 to 31 for as much then as we are the offspring of the God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, notice that, the God, the Godhead, is like unto gold or silver or stone, driven by hearts and man's device. And the times of this ignorance, the God, we can add, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed the day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. Who is that man? Jesus Christ, his son, whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath risen him from the dead. So again, the Father is the fullness of the Godhead. He is the fullness of the Godhead. He don't need anyone else beside him to be the Godhead. And in Colossians 1, verse 15 and 19, we are told now, who, speaking of Jesus, is the image of the invisible, the God, okay? So, um, the firstborn of every creature's uh, 19 for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell amen so here um what this those verses teaches us is that uh, the father is bodily all the fullness of the godhead okay he is bodily why because we are told that jesus is the image of the invisible god to us but he is visible for other beings. So he has a body. He is a personal being. Okay. So he is bodily all the fullness of the Godhead. Amen. Amen. Colossians 2, 8 and 10. Christ, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Here, we understood that <clears throat> the Son is the manifestation of all the fullness of the Godhead. Who is the Godhead? The Father. He is the manifestation of the Godhead. Amen? <clears throat> and we, are com we have confirmation of that. When you look at what inspiration says, and basically I will just uh, read what is in color. God the Father, okay, and he, and then after she talked she talked about Jesus, one clothed with humanity, one who was yet one with the deity. Deity is synonymous of what? Godhead, and so he, she is doing deity here for whom? For the Father, okay. Christ came to reveal our heavenly Father, to reveal. The character of the deity. You see, deity is employed as synonymous um, to replace the father. And then 
she said, he represents the character of God. So, God the Father, the deity, the deity, God the Father, Jesus came to represent. He came to reveal his character. Amen? Amen. Christ alone was able to represent the deity, him alone, sir. Him alone, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, God himself must, God himself must be revealed to humanity. So in Christ, it was to be revealed, okay? So, <clears throat> now, uh, we have, uh, we would like to uh, put side by side two verses, uh, John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all, all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Here, we have uh, Jesus who said that, and in Revelation, the revelation of whom? Jesus Christ. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven uh, eyes, um, which are the seven spirits of the God sent for into all the earth. So here we are told that the Comforter is the Holy Spirit that the Father sent. In Revelation, we are told that this fullness of the Spirit of the God, the God is whom? The Father is in whom? His Son, and from Him is sent to all the earth. Amen? So the Comforter is the fullness of the Spirit of the, of the Godhead. And to summarize this, um, we are told that the Father is the fullness of the Godhead bodily and is invisible to mortal sight. The Son is all the fullness of the Godhead manifested. Amen? And, and after that, the Comforter that Christ promised to send after he ascended to heaven is the Spirit in all the fullness of the Godhead, making manifest the power of divine grace to all who receive and believe in Christ as a personal Savior. There are three living persons in the heavenly trio. Now we can understand that. With all what we have studied now, we can understand that. In the name of these three powers, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, those who receive Christ by living faith are baptized, and this power will cooperate with the obedient subject of heaven in their efforts to live the new life in, in Christ. Amen? Um, we, we have already read the, those verses, but now I would like to draw your attention on the word person. It comes from a Greek word, apostasy. <coughs> Not apostasy, but upostasis. <laughs> and, um, and this word mean, can mean person, but also essence. What is the essence of something, Mr. Grammer? The essence is what makes it what it is. What it is. Your, your inner, inner, inner person, right? What you are, yourself. Okay. Um, we are told in Psalm 160, uh, 106, and 32 and 33 that uh, Moses we are told that so that it wants heal with Moses because they provoke his spirit they took of Moses after they took of his spirit and for Nebuchadnezzar it is the same Daniel 2 verse 1 uh, his spirit was troubled but we are not talking about someone else we are talking about his self his person so the spirit of a man is it is his person his self and it is the same for, for God. The Spirit of God is His person, His self. And we can read that in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 to, uh, to 12. Okay, But the God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of the God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him. 
Even so, the things of the God knoweth no man but the Spirit of the God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of the God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of the God. Amen. And in Psalm um, 139, 7 and 8, we are told by David that we cannot flee the presence of, of God. And in fact, through his spirit, he is omnipresent. Okay. So the spirit of God is the person of God uh, present everywhere. He, it is himself present everywhere but without his, his body, his uh, physical presence. And, and so I go quickly because uh, we understood that as Seventh-day Adventists, that there is one God, uh, a personal spiritual being, and he is uh, present everywhere by his representative, the Holy Spirit. And by the way, it is interesting because I made some research in your language uh, for the word representative and I didn't find the same result like in French because in French the synonym of representative is person so when I read Sister White said that Holy Spirit the third person of the Godhead and I read this uh, statement of faith I see full harmony <laughs> And that there is one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal F Father. Um, and to finish this summary, sin could be resisted and overcome only through the mighty agency of the third person of the Godhead, who would come with no modified energy, but in the fullness of the divine power. It is the spirit that makes effectual what has been wrought out by the word redeemer. It is by the spirit that the heart, the heart is made pure. Through the spirit, the believer becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Christ, she said, Christ has given his spirit. So the spirit of Christ is the third, per that third person, sir. And... He gave his spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivate tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his church, his church. And we need God's spirit, exactly. brothers and sisters. Without God's spirit, we, we will not be able to uh, overcome our, our sins, our character defects. We need the fullness of the Godhead. We need to understand that and to live it. We need to let God the Father and His Son and His Son to come in us through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus. And to conclude this uh, presentation, and because ye are sons, the God have sent for the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How about then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are not gods. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye against to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? Do you want to return to the false God? Do you want to return to the false God that keeps you in bondage, bondage of sins? We don't. I don't. And you don't. And we can say amen to that. And for that, we need to let the God send the Spirit of His Son in us so that we can be full, we can be complete, we can be complete in Christ. Amen? Um, let us have a prayer on that, please. And 
Father in heaven, we are so thankful that you have sent your son Jesus, who is uh, your representative to us. He represents the Godhead. He represents you to us. And we are so thankful of that. And he lived on this earth, set us an example, and he died for us. And he raised up again and go to heaven. And now he is with you as our mediator. But not only he is physically between you and I, but he also uh, through his spirit is with us. And you, all fullness of your, your fullness is in him. And from him you re we receive uh, the spirit, the spirit of Christ, your spirit. And Father, we... We, w we want to, to overcome, and we know that it is only possible with the, the spirit of the mighty conqueror that is, who is Jesus Christ. So please um, continue the good work that you have started in us, and may each of every one of us let your Holy Spirit work in us so that we can be perfect, we can be complete in Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen.